So you started uh, working at DEI. You worked there from two, from ninety six to oh four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a roller coaster. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, go ahead and let's, let's dump it out. Let's dump it, let's dump <laughs> that bucket all over this table. I need about seventeen hours. That's how <laughs> we got I need, it. I need to lay down on the couch, go through my therapy. Yeah, my impression of you out of the gate was one of Dad's most trusted lieutenants. Right, you're mm-hmm. you definitely are aren't overstating the relationship that you have with dad and and he looked at you as as someone that was going to help him make this thing what he wanted to wanted to wanted it to happen and everything was going in the right direction Mm -hmm. it was and things were amazing your dad didn't go out there and 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 pilfer all the best people from all the teams he was going to do that over a long, slow period of time. Mm-hmm. But anybody that he walked over, if he walked over to any organization and said to a fab guy, an engine guy, or anybody and said, I need you. Yeah. He'd say more than that, but he would, you know, he would tell them yeah. and they would come. Right. We were going to have the best people. Yeah. We had the best sponsorships, the biggest sponsorships. Mm-hmm. This machine was going to be unstoppable. Yeah. You know, and then, then he died. Right, you know, and all that changed immediately. When we all after Dad was killed, almost immediately, we all got together and decided we're just gonna keep going. Yep, yep. Whatever that means, right? And mm-hmm. we did, and we did all right. Um, oh four was our best year. Yeah. Um, but that was for me. Oh four was the the last year. It, yeah. And I, I'm glad you said that because I I left at the beginning of 04 and I'm glad that, I'm glad we set you <laughs> off in a good place. And then you were like, damn, what things happened? Things just went things yeah, went bad. But for, let's I, yeah. I I I got a, several things to, to really kind of go through there. Um, you're right. Your dad had the vision, and he just needed someone to execute it. And as a lieutenant, that's what I did. And I reported to him what was going on. He told me every day, like he would. Your dad would always be like, no first. I'm like, well, we're thinking about this. And he'd go, nah, I don't want to do that. And he's like, why? And he was like, well, because we want to do this. And he's like, okay, now let's do that. So he would, he'd make you think, or at least maybe made me think. I don't know if it's that way for everybody. But he would go, okay, well, just kind of justify it. And, and so he taught me, and I always say he was the valedictorian of the University of Common Sense. Mm. And so he was just street smart. So... And then business savvy, of course. And, and listen, let's not all put him on the pedestal that sure. he was he was flawless. The man was not flawless. No. We all know that. And we all know that in a big way. Um, but he had a vision, and he, he let you get out there and get after it and go get it done. And people quite often knew that if, if I was saying something or I was talking about something or I was recruiting or whatever, they knew basically I'm repeating Dale's words, right? I, you, don't go into, you don't go rogue on Dale Earnhardt. So I had that credibility just because I was getting it done what he needed me to get done. Once he was gone, I thought I was still doing that. And, and when I, I have a word that I describe uh, DEI as splintered. It became totally splintered. It became, this guy thinks he should run it. It's Game of Thrones, man. It was Game of Thrones. It was like, this guy needs a crown. No, this guy needs a crown. This guy needs a crown. We were like, no, 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 no. Who needs a crown? Like, no one needs a crown. No one needs a throne. No one, like, just do our jobs. And we didn't have the, the, the go-to. One. I mean, I got into a big argument with Tony Urey when Dale was around about just whatever you argue with Tony Urey about. Sure. I mean, it was just something it was big, and it blew up, and he threw an F you at me, and I threw an F you at him, and – so Dale grabbed us and he brought us up to lunch up in the trophy room and he sat down and he's like, what were you saying about Ty again? Say it right here. Well, 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 it, he came down here and was trying to do this and he goes, well, here's why he did that. And he goes, Ty, t- say what you were talking about, Tony. And I'm like, well, I mean, he's just, he won't listen. You know, like, so you go, we, he made us talk. And then, you know, we, we, didn't, we, were, we were never close buddies or anything, but we talked it out. We didn't have that afterwards. When someone wanted want to talk about this guy, it just, he found a click, and this guy found a click, and that guy found a click, and next thing you know, we had all these people. And then, just like par- paranoia fell in to Teresa, quite honestly, paranoia was like, you know, who's trying to get Dale's money? Who's trying to get our money? Who's trying to get this power? It fell across this, the whole company, and it splintered bad. And the only person that could have saved it would have been you, but she didn't let you do that. And that was, uh, that was a disappointment for what we pulled together. Were you aware of all this? Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's... I was aware of it, but ignoring it at the same time, 
in my mind that uh, I lost all confidence in this becoming what dad wanted it to be when he died. It, it was never, we could try, and we had a hell of a 04, was awesome. I mean, won six races, cars were fast, cars got power, we're winning plate races and all the things. I mean, on paper, we had good success. But I just knew that it was without him here to help us keep that vision heading in that direction, we just weren't going to hit that target. We might end up over here or close or over here, but it wasn't going to be exactly what he had thought, right, and what he wanted. And all of us wanted his he, his common sense. Yeah. The street smarts was so helpful for me in my life, my personal life, your personal mm -hmm. life. Um, he just helped you make sure you're not to, you know, put your foot in a bucket. <laughs> and I, you know, we all missed that. And I knew we were going to make mistakes. And, and I didn't know how long we could sustain the momentum we had and the sponsorship support that we had and the relationships that we had created. That was all going to be harder to keep. And we just, just kept going forward. And yeah. if that meant, you know, whatever that meant, right? And yeah. it's like we were propelled. Yes, we were cast out. We were right, propelled right from the launch. We were launched from the pad, yeah. and there was like, <laughs> yeah. we're going to go for a while. We went 2002, 2003, 2004, yeah. and it was like, we're eventually we're going to come back to Earth. Yes. Because we didn't have any more fuel. That's right. You know, it's and, like a rocket. Yeah, exactly. Shot and so, up there. But because we had a tremendous amount of on-track success um, mm -hmm. despite ourselves after Dale passed away. And that's sure. why I kind of tell people, like, man, we, we actually did a lot of great things after he passed. Um, but it was not sustainable. No. And, and I, and I'm talking about myself personally, cause I've had a lot of days in the mirror, you know, personally and professionally I had a lot of days in the mirror. And I look back on some of the things I did. I'm like, I would have punched myself. I think I was a total at the time. And I, it was an ego thing. It was like, I'm like, we're going to do this. And I would pound my fist and say, damn it, this is how we're going to do it. And everybody's uh, like, yeah. Yeah. She's like, hey, <laughs> yeah. you shut up. Like, and then I'm like, well, what? And you know, and then I would blow yeah. up. And then, and so I've always told Golly. people, I said, I said, if 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 I if you're nice to me, I'm nicer to you. Yeah, yeah. If you're mean to me, I'm meaner, meaner to you. To you. Yeah. you punch me, I'll punch you harder. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm that way. I'm just built that way. Yeah. And when people were coming at me, I was like, I was bowed up. Yeah. And then people were like, what? The I remember that, that. I remember that. You were. Um, and it was, it was, you're right. It's exactly, it, it was in your personality. I don't know how much you've changed, or I'm sure mm -hmm. everybody changes and, and becomes better versions of themselves, I hope. But mm -hmm. um, I remember that. Like, you, <laughs> if I remember going into your office and having some of the best conversations mm -hmm. and feeling like, man, we are on the same damn page. We're, we both got the same feeling about this. And then I remember days going into your office and going, this couldn't have ground, the gear, gears couldn't have ground any harder yeah. against each other. Like right. we're pulling against each other. Yeah. And, uh, and you, you were, I kind of felt bad for you because um, there were some times when you felt like the whole place was against you. Mm -hmm. Then you had, you know, you had this, you had Teresa over the top of all of it, <laughs> kind of making things difficult to understand didn't know yeah. you know it was just she was uh she, I, I you probably had her ear all the time but um so maybe but maybe you didn't i don't know but it, the information from her and, and what direction she wanted this to go she wasn't as open about that as dad yeah, was right. right dad would here's my vision everybody yeah <clears throat> everybody on the same page and Teresa wasn't stand up in front and 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 tell a story right yeah. and, and tell us what what's about to happen yeah um, she was behind the curtain and and quiet. <laughs> literally, yes, <laughs> literally behind the curtain. And so, it was it was hard. And I know this isn't doing a good job of describing it, but um, there were days when I'd walk into your office and it was the freaking mood in there was bad. so bad. Yeah, yeah. But then there were days when it was complete opposite. Yeah, because I'd hear all the whining and complaining and all this kind of stuff that's yeah. going on. <clears throat> Some of it was about you and not paying attention and mm -hmm. not being around, not yeah. doing this and being out partying or whatever, whatever they were wanting to be about that day. And so who was going to be, who was going to be the guy who had to say something to you? Yeah. Right. It had to be me. Yeah. And so, I mean, Colin Powell said one time, if you're going to ever be a leader, you're going to be, you're going to piss off more people than you make happy. Yeah. And you have to do that. Right. So I had to take that risk to be that way. The problem I have I had, even with myself, I didn't have the credibility to do it. 
Like I had it when your dad was there because they knew I was sort of doing what he wanted. Yeah. And I and I had that credibility mm. and everything was built. But when he was gone, it wasn't like I had Teresa. No. You know, it wasn't like I was speaking on behalf of the ownership. I was it was like me, right? Yeah. I mean like and it could blow it off pretty easily. Yeah. And then um, you know, the, probably the biggest event we had was when you and Michael came to my office one time and said it was December, it was right the day of the Christmas party of 03. Jeez. Do you know this story? No. <laughs> You guys came to my office and you're like, we've been talking last night. We were talking last night and we haven't been paid since September. Uh. You remember that? No. Uh-uh. He said, we haven't been paid since September and you get, you guys have breached my contract. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, time out. And they're like, how come you haven't paid me? And I'm like, well, I signed all these, every operational check except for one account. And that account pays you guys. And that's Teresa. And you're like, well, I want to talk to her right now. And you were mad as hell. And I'm like, I don't know. And you're like, well, I'm going to go out and find out what, what I'm really worth. And you had just signed your deal. You had just signed an extension. And I'm like, just through 07 or something, I'm like, just calm down. We'll get this worked out. So let's call, let's call Teresa and get her down here. This is probably like 11 in the morning. So we call Teresa's office, call the house, and an hour goes by. And you're getting madder. And then... They're like, and she's like, well, we're like, Judy, when's she coming down? Well, be 30 more minutes. And we waited another hour. So you were getting mad. So you left. And you, you and Michael, Michael and Richie Gilmore were there. And I came back. Well, then finally I said, listen, do not attack her. Don't, do not make this personal when she shows up. This is a contractual issue. Yeah. This is business, right? So I went on my computer and I typed up I bullet points of things I wanted you to say. And say it this way, all right? Be ready. Because when she comes in here, just like have a professional conversation. Yeah. We're like, all right, cool. She finally shows up. We waited three hours. She walks in, and Junior is so mad, he starts yelling at her. <laughs> Been waiting down here for three damn hours, and he just starts jumping her, jumping her case, and he's like, y'all haven't paid me, and you breached my contract, and that's how the conversation started. And I was like, oh, shit. And, it, and, I, and I'm trying to, like, mediate, but it was, it was, it was over. And it just became, like, it was bitter. And so this whole meeting left, and you said what you wanted to say, and you didn't want to stick around longer. You had stayed long enough, and you left. And I, and I was sat there, and Michael didn't say a word. And he and, he and Richie left. And Therese looked at me and said, you ambushed me. Mm. And oh, like, Lord. Yeah, she goes, you ambushed me. And I said, Teresa, I did not. I said, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to resolve an issue. I don't have access to pay these guys. She goes, you care more about Dale Jr. than you care about me. And I said, caring about Dale Jr. is caring about you. And, and she made a comment. She goes, well, if Dale Jr. doesn't want to stick around here, we'll make another Dale Jr. And I was like, do you speak French? Who's we? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's not another Dale Jr. Jeff Gordon can't do it. There's no one can do it. Like, we, we have to t- resolve this issue. And she was so mad at me that she didn't talk to me for another month until she said, you can sign this paper or this paper. One is a termination or one's a you can quit, and the other one is you can take a rejection. And I, it was all over. A reduction? Was, yeah. Like a thir- 67% reduction in, in, in salary. You? Yeah. And she 67%. Said, 67%. She was knocking me down to less than I made when I first started there. And she said, you can sign one of these two. And I'm like, this is over the, you know, for this meeting with we had with the drivers. And she was like, I'm been, I've, been, I've been hearing so much stuff lately. I just don't want to talk to you anymore. And I lost my, my cool. And it, it made it worse. And they, so anyway, that's, that was the end. That, I, was you left. I just said, I said, I'll, I'll be here until we load them up to go to the Daytona 500. And we load them up through the Daytona 500 be my last day. Oh my God. Yeah. That was an, and that was, and it was all, she thought I ambushed her. And so I, I, so I kind of, help her. Damn. <laughs> hey, damn. W- w- without that though, how yeah. long do you think you would have lasted at DEI? I tell you what, what it, I, I, I felt like we could have been together a long time. Um, and what gave me some hope was when in September of that year of 03, Junior signed his contract. Mm-hmm. And I got called to Teresa's office by Teresa. Um, and Junior was in there. And I think Kelly was in there. Were we hollering, screaming? No. <laughs> you were signing your contract. You were happy. You were signing your contract. And Teresa said, Junior is hi- signing his contract. And he said, There's a few people around here that he want to make sure we're going to be here. And you're one of them. And I was like, I'm never going anywhere. I, you will have to drag me out of here. And they did. But, I mean, you'll have to drag me out of here. And they, they didn't really. I, I, I walked myself out of there. But, yeah, but I was like, but I felt like it. But I was right. like, I, I'm, 
I'm not going anywhere, man. And, and I and I I just my my heart for that place was more than I had. I gave more to that place than I gave to my family. I didn't go to a lot of kid stuff. I didn't. I wasn't home a lot. I was gone every weekend, and I was just like that place meant everything. And 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 sometimes the people say, "Listen, you got to honor the living more than the dead," and I was just honoring that man I was trying so hard and so hard that I think I just I wasn't I wasn't old enough I wasn't mature enough to handle what had been dropped on us and I don't think any of us were and um, I certainly was and so so anyway and then when all that went down you know I was like ah, it'll be all right we'll talk it out and then everybody was like all right move on Life is best lived in motion. And that's why Tire Pros gets you ready for all your driving adventures. Whether it's along corners and curves, across city and state lines. Because we're more than just tires. We're auto care too. Tire Pros, so you can focus on the road ahead.